Hi, this is Ethan Hein. Welcome to Play With Your Music. In this video, we're going to be talking about some classic drum beats in a variety of styles and how to program them in the drum machine. Before we get started on the actual music, just a word about what it is that you're seeing on the screen. Uh, over here, you've got a standard time unit box system representation of each beat. Um, this is the way that it would look if you were to program it into an actual drum machine or software emulating a drum machine. And uh, if you look in the link at the, in the description of the video, you can get a Google spreadsheet that contains all of the drum patterns that I talk about in this video, plus many others. Uh, so please go ahead and do that. But I'm also showing you everything in my preferred circular notation, because that helps you understand the functions a little bit better. So this first beat is called Four on the Floor. It's something that you hear in every disco, techno, EDM song, basically <laughs> It's called Four on the Floor because you've got a kick drum here, 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 and here. Um, all of the strongest beats, the, uh, the downbeat, the backbeat, the next downbeat, the next backbeat. And any kind of disco, techno, EDM beat is going to have those four kick drums on the strongest beats. Um, you've also got on the back beats here, the third beats, you've got both snares and hand claps. And on the off beats, you've got some, uh, some hi-hats. So let's listen to it. So the only thing that's keeping this beat from being totally symmetrical, predictable, and boring is this one little bit of syncopation right here, this uh, open hi-hat on the, uh, the and of one on the second measure. And uh, that's a good way to keep your, your house techno disco beats from being too boring, is to introduce a little syncopation on top of the standard four on the floor. All right, the next really crucial pattern we've got is just standard rock and roll. Um, everything is on a relatively strong beat. We've got nothing at all on the ands. You've got a kick drum on uh, every quarter note except for the back beats. On the back beats, instead, you've got the snare drum. And this snare drum on the back beat is something that you're going to see in every single beat that we talk about. Um, if there's one thing that ties together all forms of dance, rock, pop, whatever music, it's snare drums on the backbeats. Um, so because there's nothing at all on the weak beats, on the ands, um, this beat is a little bit square. Uh, let's listen to it. So it sounds good, right? It's got a drive to it, but it's a little predictable. Uh, this is a rock beat that is a little bit different from the standard one. It is the drum intro to When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. And what makes this beat uh, different is it does start to introduce some syncopation. So right here, you've got a kick drum on the end of two, which is actually the weakest beat that there is, the most, it's like the most dissonant beat, rhythmically speaking. Um, instead of this kick drum, where you're expecting it down here on the second downbeat, it's anticipated. So there's no kick drum at all. Instead, it's on this other extremely weak beat, the and of four. Uh, and then you have yet another kick drum on a weak beat uh, right here on the and of two. So even though the snare and the hi-hat patterns are exactly the same as in a standard rock beat, uh, the kick drum pattern is quite a bit more complex and syncopated. And for that reason, hip-hop uh, producers love to sample this beat. Um, probably is most famously used in Rhymin' and Stealin' by the Beastie Boys, also Lyrical Gangbang by Dr. Dre, um, and it's appeared in some non-hip-hop songs as well, most notably Army of Me by Bjork and Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover by Sophie B. Hawkins.
All right, from rock, we're going to start moving into funk and hip hop, and you're going to see more and more syncopation as we go. Um, this beat is called Impeach the President. It comes from the first few seconds of the song by the same name by a group called the Honey Drippers. Not a very well-known group, not a very well-known song, but you have definitely heard this beat. According to the website whosampled.com, it's the most commonly sampled beat in hip-hop history. Uh, it's used on at least one commercial recording every year since 1987, and most years like dozens or hundreds of recordings. So let's listen to it. So uh, again, this beat is very, very similar to the standard rock beat. You've got your snares on the back beats. You've got your closed hi-hats marking off all the quarters. Um, but again, as with when the levy breaks, you've got a little bit more syncopation. So you've got this kick drum here on the first and of four. You've got this hi-hat also on that same weak beat. And then uh, here, you've got this surprising open hi-hat. Uh, and again, just that little, little bit of syncopation is enough to really give it a groove and give it a more kind of unpredictable feeling. Uh, another extremely common hip hop breakbeat. Um, this is from the Funky Drummer Parts 1 and 2 by James Brown. Uh, this beat was played by a drummer named Clyde Stubblefield, who was only 18 years old when the recording was made, and it's an incredible one. Uh, and just from glancing at it, you can see that it's uh, a lot more complicated than any of the beats we've talked about so far. So let's listen to it. All right, so what's going on here? First of all, instead of an eighth note pulse, it's got a 16th note pulse. Uh, it's got um, hi-hats on every single slot here in the pattern. Um, also, there's a lot more syncopation happening. Um, you've got no kick drum on this downbeat instead. You've got it displaced all the way over here to beat two. You've got a kick drum on this very surprising beat and of three. Uh, you've got snare drum hits in unexpected places. You've got them on the back beats, but you've also got it on the and of four and the and of uh, four down here. All these other unexpected places. Um, you've got the hi-hat opening up in a couple of surprising spots. So again, quite a bit more complexity, even though you still have this foundation of a kick drum here and uh, snares on the back beats. So it's still a recognizable dance funk kind of beat, there's just a lot more for your brain to process. All right, now we move into Afro-Cuban land. Um, this is a beat called Son Clave. And uh, you can just tell from the instrumentation, quite a very different sound from rock and funk and those kinds of, uh, those kinds of styles. You've got kicks doing this pattern that's like do-do, 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 do-do. Uh, you've got the ride cymbal hitting every beat. And all of the action, uh, all of the complexity is in the rim shot or a clave or some other short, sharp, high-pitched sound. And, uh, well, let's just listen to it. Uh, so, son clave appears not just in Afro-Cuban mu Afro music, but all kinds of rock, jazz, blues, funk, hip-hop, country, metal, techno. It's actually hard to find a style of music, of dance or pop music, that does not use son clave once in a while. Um, and what makes it so compelling is 
it's very syncopated, right? You've got all these these hits on unexpected beats, but it's also weirdly symmetrical. Just by looking at it, you can see it forms this kind of pentagon, and your ear can tell that there's a symmetrical shape in there. It might not be able to tell exactly what it is, but it definitely knows that there's a pattern, even if it's a sort of surprising and asymmetrical pattern. Um, uh, this is a beat called Bossa Nova that's almost identical to Son Clave. The only difference uh, is that this guy is uh, just one slot later. In Son Clave, it would be here. In Bossa Nova, it, Bossa Nova, it's here. Seems like a trivial difference, but it does make quite a difference in the vibe. Let's listen. So because this guy is on a weaker beat than the equivalent drum hit in Son Clave, this is even more syncopated. It's got a even more kind of sophisticated, urbane feeling. Uh, and you don't really hear it that much outside of Bossa Nova, um, just because it so clearly evokes Brazil. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't have quite the same universality as Son Clave, but still a really good beat to know. Finally, this is a classic hip-hop breakbeat that I'm including because it combines some of the, uh, the funk rock idiom with the Afro-Cuban idiom. So on the outer part of the circle, you've got um, your kick on the downbeat, you've got your snares on the backbeat, you've got some, uh, some funky syncopation happening in these other kicks. Um, you mostly have the hi-hats just keeping time, but you do have them in a few unexpected places. And then in here, you've got this bell pattern that is very, very complex, very syncopated. Let's listen. Okay, if you're an aficionado of 80s hip hop, you will definitely recognize this beat um, from uh, Peter Piper by Run DMC, many other songs of that era. More recently, uh, it's been used in Work It by Missy Elliott. And this uh, bell pattern that's going on has a name, it's called Agogo. It's a traditional West African rhythm. And it works incredibly well on top of like a straight ahead American funk beat, right? Pretty cool. So again, take a look in the description of the video for the spreadsheet with this and all of the other beats. Try plugging them into the drum machine. Try varying them and moving things around. See what you can find for yourself. Have fun.